Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather, and we'll get into some of the uh, the snow forecast totals in just a second. I want to show you this in Colorado. This is all part of storm number one blowing through. We've had gusts of 90, 100 miles an hour in parts of the mountains of Colorado, but this is a snow squall warning. The winds are so strong coming off the Continental Divide that it's pushing this, this line, this squall line of snow out across the front range of Colorado. Very interesting. Uh, but you can see it's still snowing. It's just the beam is blocked by the high peaks in Colorado. It's still snowing up uh, across I-70 and most of the mountain zones. So that's the current uh, situation. Let me just show you what I'm thinking about here. So I want to get into it, just a little bit of a discussion on um, where the totals stand with storm number one, the one that we're seeing move through Colorado, that moved through Utah, Wyoming, California. So overall, um, the numbers in, in the Sierra were under what I was forecasting were less. Um, so there was a bit of underperformance there. They were right on the mark for the Tetons. Um, they were under for the Wasatch, as far as I can tell. I mean, it's still very good. But um, I was hoping for closer to 20 to 24 inches. I just don't think we're going to get there with this first storm. Um, where else? Those are the main areas. Still snowing and windy in Colorado, so we'll see where we end up there. So what I've done is I've actually adjusted some of the totals with storm number two um, down. Some of them went up, but some of them went down as a result of the way things have unfolded. Um, and then looking down the road, high pressure comes back around 12, 11, and there may be a, a storm three tucked in there between before the high pressure comes back. So we're going to look at all of that today. Here is the um, infrared satellite, three storms lined up. So there's the possibility of a, of a number three, but the storm number one is, uh, it, it is racing through Colorado. Well, the low is actually in Wyoming, but it's racing, it's pushing snow and wind through Colorado and then away. Second storm, you can see it is a giant area of low pressure spinning and it's going to drop down through California and then there's a storm behind that as well. Just posted this, this is uh, chrystomer.com on my blog, storm number two, adjusting the forecast totals. And this is what you should do. You should always see how things verify and then adjust accordingly based on um, how it matches up with the next storm. So, you know, I went into all that, talked about some of the big winners, some of the, uh, the numbers that were smaller. Um, very windy. Look at this view in, uh, at Loveland Skier. It is just a, an, an inferno of wind up there in the Continental Divide. Unbelievable. Um, the view from Mammoth, it's sunny. Now we're waiting on the next storm. After about two feet of snow up and down the Sierra, or close. I was actually hoping for more, forecasting more than that, um, but it just didn't happen. All right, so I went into the setup. Let's look at the forecast pattern here. Um, so let me just show you the way this looks high res. So this is 12-3, Saturday 12-3. There comes storm number two, powerful jet slamming into the Sierra, um, and some moisture as well. Not as much. This one doesn't have the moisture contribution that storm number one had, but it will still bring some snow to the Sierra, and I'll look at those numbers coming up. Um, so that's 12-3. Here's 12.4, no, 12.6. Here's 12.6. So this is storm number two and probably storm three as well on its backside. I just didn't mark it, um, but all of that you can see. It, it, storm number two is a little more ragged once it gets into the interior. It's pretty solid in California, but it's a little more ragged once it gets into um, it, exactly where the track is going to end up. That's the big question. Will it go through Colorado? Will it go south of Colorado? Or will it be so ragged that it doesn't matter? Not sure. Um, so here is 1211. And this is, at this point, it's shut off. The flow is shut off. High pressure is rebuilding, pushes the jet back to the north, favors the Pacific Northwest, BC, and Bay up for the heaviest snow during this later period. So I looked at all that on my uh, blog this morning. Um, I also went into timing. All right, so here is the future radar and satellite. All right, so here's Saturday morning at 6. Here comes Sunday morning at 6. New snow, storm 2 hitting California, and then it blows all that into the interior. And then there's Tuesday at 6. Here is Wednesday at 6. Where exactly the low goes, big question, and how ragged will it be when it rolls through Colorado, Utah, New Mexico? So... It's that uncertain nature that, uh, that really forced me to down to, to, to take some of these tolls and shave them down for Utah in particular 
and, and to some degree up in the Tetons, I shaved those down. I shaved the Sierra down. Um, but some of the numbers that actually went up are in Colorado. All right, so back to the blog. Let's look at forecast totals here. Um, let's see where we're at. Okay, here we go. So this is all of today through the 3rd. So um, you've got, there's a little bit of additional snow potentially on the 3rd as that next storm comes in. So you're starting to see that capture, that storm number 2 across the Sierra. So 3 to 6 on the 3rd. Maybe another inch in the Tetons and the Wasatch, but the storm that's rolling through Colorado right now will drop those numbers that you see, along with a lot of wind, of course. So that all happens um, through the third, the second through the third. Here is the fourth through the eighth. Um, some notes on this in California. So if you add up, okay, let me just see. So we got three to six here uh, in the period, and then we add another roughly four to ten. So you've got at least another foot coming in the Sierra, but that is definitely down. I shaved those numbers down from what I was thinking yesterday. Um, in the uh, the Wasatch, you've got another 10 to 15 coming, essentially. So another good foot or more, probably another foot or more in the, uh, the little cottonwood, big cottonwood districts in the canyons. That is down from what I was thinking yesterday. I was hoping for more along the lines of 20 or 20 to 24. That is, I just, I mean, unless things change and the low is more consolidated with a better track, it's just not going to happen. Um, so we're looking at 10 to 15. Uh, up in the Tetons, another 15 is definitely possible. That's also, I've also shaved that down uh, from the 20 that I was thinking yesterday. And still some, some decent snow to go up in Montana and Idaho, another 4 to 10 up there. In Colorado, some of the numbers have gone up. Um, you can see that and, and look at Purgatory, look at Wolf Creek. I think with, again, it depends on the track of the low because the it's the wind direction. There were graphics that are forcing the big numbers in Purgatory and Wolf Creek and in Crested Butte um, for that matter. So, you know, if the track changes, the wind changes, the snowfall forecast changes. But that's what I'm thinking right now. Brought up some of those numbers to take into account that track and that those were graphics. Um, and then beyond this, 9-10, there's that other storm, 8-9-10. So you're already starting to see probably a little bit of influence in the Pacific Northwest from that 8-9-10. So there would be that additional storm possible, and then high pressure would come in after this. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care.